somebody. Anybody want to testify tonight? Hallelujah. Good evening, old landmark. Come on in. It's time for our Wednesday night Bible study. Somebody needs to tell it. Get up and testify. You. Thank you for joining tonight. Take a moment and share that we're on. There is a word from the Lord tonight. Sister Margaret, God bless you, Sister Hilda Williams. Hey, Sister Stevens. Yo bendiga, Pastora Nadia Garcia. Praying for you and your family. She just lost her daughter. First Lady, God bless you. I feel like testifying tonight. God bless you, Amos family. I just shared with you. Let me find my missions family. I don't have the time to share with everyone. It says, hey, be sure to let me know. So, like me. Friend me, like old landmark, follow old landmark, and you'll get all the notifications. Someone else has helped me out tonight. Be sure to pick up Iglesia de Dios en Cristo. Let them know that we're on. Church of God in Christ of Puerto Rico. Let them know we're on. I want everybody around the world to put your hands together. Yes. Because all the praise belongs to God. Here we go. Here we go, Saint. All the praise. Every praise. Bless your class of 73 praying for my dear friend, Suze Scott Patterson, loss of her dear husband. Praying for you, my friend. Well, every praise is to our God. Every word of worship is with one accord. Every praise. Every praise is to our God. God bless you tonight. We are honored to be in the Lord's house. Glad to see each of you and to know that you are yet in the presence of the Lord, serving him, honoring him, worshiping him. And I want to thank you for your prayer and your support. 
amen, not just for the every now and then thinking of me and saying, Lord, bless Bishop Amos, but also for how you support in the financial, for how you support spiritually, for your prayers that allow me to travel in and out of the country, doing the marvelous work of the Lord. There's nothing greater, no greater experience than to know you're doing the will of God. To my friends here in Raleigh, North Carolina, friends and co-workers, to the saints at Old Landmark and Fort Wayne, to the church in Indianapolis, to the body of Christ everywhere, my dear beloved mother, my sisters and brothers, I thank God for you all, my family in California, honor you today and certainly my beloved wife of 42 years we thank god for her say hello to the same sister amos hello everyone she said a very weak way she's back there she said hello everyone and god bless you hallelujah thank god for her and for how god has blessed us over the years with our children and the family that he has given us this is the day that the lord has made and you know what i will rejoice somebody say i will rejoice you got to put some emphasis sometimes on your determination to rejoice in the Lord, your determination to lift up Jesus. Why? Because so much is going on in the world with its purpose and intent to cause you to fall away, to cause you to be discouraged, to cause you to give up, throw in the towel, say it's not worth it. I'm not getting anywhere. I'm giving everything and getting nothing back. But I want you to know that God is on your side and you just need to remind yourself of who you are and every now and then say, I will rejoice. Through my storm, I will rejoice. Through my crisis, I will rejoice and give God the glory because he made this day and he made me for this day. He made me able to handle it. He made me able to tolerate it. He made me able to endure it. So I might get stressed and might get down a little bit every now and then, but I'm not giving up. I'm gonna hold on to the unchanging hand of God I'm going to hold on to the promises of the Lord that maketh rich and his blessings that add no sorrow. I'm going to hold on to his promise that he will not withhold any good thing from those that love him. Yes. And he gave us certain inalienable rights. We have the right to call on him when we need him. Somebody put a praise right there. I'm getting happy thinking about it. You can call on him when you need him. You have a right to trust in him. You have a right to believe on him. No matter what's going on in your body, what's going on in your conditions, in your home, in your family, you yet have a right to trust God. Amen. My friend, Brother Mitchell, you I know you're hurting with your mom's illness and you, and you want to see God bring it through. And I want, it, I want it to happen for you. Oh, but you got a right to believe God for victory, even in her health. You got a right to believe God in the face of adversity. You got a right to believe God that he he is going to turn it all around. Somebody say, I believe God. Believe Come on, I believe God. I believe and the very God of peace that has sanctified us will sanctify us wholly, W-H-O-L-L-Y. He will complete his work. He will make everything we do touch and become engaged in holy. And when he makes it holy, it means he makes it blessed. He makes it anointed. He makes it empowered. He makes it strengthened. And I want you to have that kind of strength today. So I do want to thank God for you. I want to thank God for our workers at the old landmark church you allow me your pastor to be gone for a week here and a week there to take care of the business of the jurisdiction and to preach uh, across the waters and i thank god for your integrity that you remain one amen that you remain faithful you remain faithful in tithes faithful in offers faithful in attendance and we thank you thank you officers thank you musicians amen and i'm looking forward to being with you this sunday as well it's also our third sunday so our youth pastor will be with us but i am excited to be in the lord's house to see what god's gonna do you got to get excited i'm excited to see what god's gonna say i'm excited to see how god's gonna move and i want you to be there to be a part of that great excitement and I, I just think that we miss out a lot of times because we don't get excited enough about God and about who he is and what he's able to do. So let's talk to the Lord and then we're going to go into the word of God. Amen. And I uh, want you to have an opportunity to say hello to each other. But Lord, we thank you now as we look up unto you, our Father and our creator, our maker. We look up to you for all things in our lives. Whatever's going on in our lives, we look to you to fix it. You are our fix-it God. You are our deliverer. You are our very present help 
in our time of trouble. So we pray that you bring your peace, your love, your kindness, your meekness, and your mercy into our lives even the more. Heal those that need to be healing. Touch my son there. Touch my daughter. Touch my children and grandchildren. Oh, Lord, touch the saints' families. Touch them, Lord. You can do it, Lord. Nothing too hard for you. Whatever they're going through, bring them out, Lord, with your mighty outstretched hand. Whatever the problem is, Lord, turn it around because you're the God that's able to make things to, to change and, and make things happen on the behalf of the believer. So we trust you now and we believe you. Now, we pray, Lord, that you anoint me for this hour anoint me for these words this moment that i speak anoint my lips that i might speak the wonderful words of life and encourage somebody anoint my ears that i might hear what the spirit is saying to me anoint my tongue that it might be delivered in power and in strength and that your people will know they have heard from god we ask these blessings in your name and we say thank god and amen god bless you take a moment and greet one another in the name of the lord Take a moment and tell somebody what God is doing in your life. Good God bless you again. Those whose names I didn't call may not see you. Mr. Eubank, God bless you. Amen. Each of you that are present. Deacon Charles Amos, Sister Tanita Lee, we honor you. Again, my dear friend in the state of New York, New York City, Sister Margaret Henry. Amen. Somewhere in New York, I might have her wrong, but she's in New York. In the Bronx, New York. Amen. God bless you. Julia Buckingham, thank you so much for your faithful attendance and support. And all of you, the people of God, I love you, and I'm praying God's strength in you. Hallelujah. And I'm glad you made it. Somehow you made it. All right. Now, we're going to turn to the word of the Lord in the book of St. Luke. In the book of St. Luke, chapter 20, chapter 18, Luke 18. And our text and presentation shall come from verse 28 through 30, verses 28 through 30. Luke chapter 18, verses 28 through 30. While you are going there, I must take a moment and speak concerning a loss of tragedy in one of the, our families in the body of Christ in the home of Brother uh, Lebernski. Brother Lebrunsky, Lebrunsky Christian, that is the son of our own mother, Mary Anderson. I mean, Lebrunsky has a son, 13 years old, that went to be with the Lord. He was born with some conditions, but God gave them 13 years to enjoy that beautiful young man. And we're praying for Lebrunsky and his wife that God will give them strength and peace. And that homegoing service, old landmark, I, I expect some of you to be there. It's going to be in Warsaw, Indiana. Amen. And we will post the information in the Facebook page for those that may want to go and be a part of the celebration. Amen. Our own first lady will be the eulogist. Amen. And I know God is going to bless in a great way. Evangelist missionary Amos will be the eulogist. And I'm asking you to pray one for another that the will of God be done and he strengthen that family through this very difficult time. Amen. How many know God is able? Come on, say with me, God is able. God is able. Yes, so now in the 18th chapter of this text, we find a situation that begins with the young man coming to Jesus. He comes to Jesus and he comes almost proud of himself. Jesus gives this uh, as a parable, saying that you ought to always pray uh, and not to faint. But in the list of parables, where he speaks of how a, a man engages a judge and, and the widow engages a judge and she begs him and says, avenge me. And because the, the judge, although he is carnal, has some compassion and provides for the woman. So in the parable, in the 18th chapter, it opens, uh, it is to let you know that God has a heart. <laughs> That's what the purpose of the parable, let you know, although, Men who don't even fear God sometime will uh, give you a blessing and yield to you in your crisis. How much more than does God love his own people? And then the next thing that happens is a young man comes to the Lord and says, hey, you know, I want to follow you. I want to follow you. What do I have to do to follow you? Jesus said, that's fine. I can use more followers. He said, I want you to do this. Sell everything that you have and give to the poor and then you can follow me. 
Well, it was interesting that that was his thought or that that was his plan. But when Jesus told him what he had to do, he had to consider his great wealth. He considered all the stuff he would be losing. He considered all of his earthly losses. And Jesus saw that he was sorrowful. In fact, he was sorrowful because he was very rich. This man was sorry he, because he was so rich. He, would, he, he wanted to follow Jesus, but he felt like I'm too rich to follow Jesus. It cost too much to follow Jesus. And when he heard that this was his condition, he felt sorrowful and realized he was in no condition to follow Jesus. And when Jesus saw that this man was sorrowful, he said, how heartily shall they which have riches enter into the kingdom of God? There are a lot of folk that have money, they have wealth. It's gonna be hard for them to get in because there's no room in their heart for Jesus because their wealth has crowded it out. No room in their heart for the chance to give up everything to follow Jesus. Now we say, I give up everything to follow him, but when it comes down to the very little stuff we have, this man was very rich. And most of us not even close to very in the rich. We're not even close to rich in the very. We're not even close to the R in the word rich. But yet it's hard to give up. It's hard to surrender what we have that we might follow Jesus. In fact, this is where this great statement that Jesus made has been documented. He says it's easier for a camel to go through a needle's eye than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. And I know you understand that the needle's eye was a, an area, an entry uh, for camels and their burdens, for beasts and their burdens. And for the camel to get in with the load that's on stacked on top, uh, the camel would have to get down on his knees and literally drop his head and lower his back and crawl. It was difficult, but sometimes they made it and some couldn't make it. Jesus said, that's just how hard it's gonna be for some men to enter in because we're caught up in our riches. So now we come to verse 28. Then Peter said, lo, we have left all and followed thee in uh, uh, contraposition and opposition to what this rich fella did, Peter says, consider us. We left everything we had and we followed you. And he's, Jesus says to Peter, verse 29, verily I say unto you, there is no man that have left house or parents or brethren or wife or children for the kingdom of God's sake who shall not receive manifold more in this present time and in the world to come life everlasting. Yeah. Our subject today is trusting him in the present time. Say with me, trust him, trust him. in the present time. I understand that that many of us have given up everything to follow the Lord and what we gave up is relative, but it's 100% important to us. What you sacrificed to become a child of God, what you didn't do to enjoy the life of the believer, the, the friends that you lost, the money that you could have had through your illicit gain. I'm talking about when you was pushing dope and, and peddling and when you were peddling things that socially you realize are more harmful to good than good, but it made money for you. Oh, for your little rackets and for your schemes. You you knew how to get over on people and, and you might have been good at it. You were a thief, a pickpocket, you were a robber. You, you made a living doing it. But when you found Jesus, you had to leave something behind. You had to come through that eye of the needle. And some of the stuff that you had on your back didn't make it. Come on, church. Yeah. You had to crawl through that eye of the needle. And some of the things you said you'd never give up, you had to abandon. You had to crawl through the eye of the needle. And some of the things that you thought were the most important things in your life, you had to realize, Lord, there's nothing more important to me than my relationship with you. Uh, I, I will give up the world and its follies ado, the hymn says. I started with Jesus and I'm going through. You got to make up in your mind when you want to be saved, when you, when you want Jesus more than any other thing. You got to make up in your mind that you'll give up everything to follow Jesus. 
I love giving this particular testimony. It's a borrowed testimony, the testimony of one of my cousins and, and actually his mother. I'm talking about my friend, Elder Gene Wright, my brother and my friend. Amen. We were cousins, but we're like brothers. In fact, all of us that grew up together in Fort Wayne in the North area and just like the cousins in the South, amen, a cousin was the relative word because if you needed something from the other, they were there just like a brother. Amen. I don't know if any family has ever been as close as the Amos clan. We are clannish. All our best friends were Amoses. All our people we hung out with Amoses. All our babysitters were Amoses. Y'all don't hear me. We were just that close. Didn't hardly trust nobody unless you were Amos. Those who knew how to roller skate would travel the state of Indiana, going from roller rink to roller rink, and they were all Amoses. All Amoses. Why? Because we were just that close. And Gene, uh, then a, a man of the world, and, and he was living that hard life and living in Grand Rapids and doing all that he could. He was in the streets, amen. I'm not saying anything derogatory, it's just a fact. He was there in Grand Rapids doing all that he could do. And his mom said that uh, he was on heroin. He admitted he was using heroin and he was losing weight. He was uh, one time a thick man, he was losing weight, now a skinny, and he looked like he's dying. He's becoming a skeleton, but just stuck on that life, stuck on that life. Life, stuck on that life. Amen. The drugs were overtaking him. The street life was overtaking him. And 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 ain't he said that she told him, I want you to go on down south to die because I don't want to see you die up here. I can't stand it. I hadn't lost a child and I, I don't want to see you die up here. Gene said he went down south. He had to leave and he went there and he only had a friend in Tupelo that he ran into and he heard his friend was there said this is it because they used to hang together friend had been with him and they were running the streets together and he called his friend said hey man I'm in town I need a place to stay he, he said well I don't know he said, no no I really man I need you. we can we can come together he's okay you can come and stay but I want you to know I don't do the things I used to do Gene like that's all right he said well if you're gonna stay with me you got to go where I go and you got to do what I do he said okay I'll go where you go and do what you do and of course, that meant he had to go to church. And this friend of his took him to church and he heard the word of the Lord. He said it was high when he went to church. Then he heard the word of the Lord. Word of the Lord pierced his heart. The word of the Lord reached him and, and the word of the Lord gave him a hunger for righteousness, yes. a hunger. And that desire for what he saw, that desire for what he heard was so much greater than that human desire. And I, I'm a physician. You all know that. I understand the, the neurology of the brain. I understand what addiction does to your mind. I understand how the craving comes and causes pain. And the pain is there to let you know that you must treat your addiction. All the neuroreceptors are hypersensitive and you need something to trigger them. You need something to engage engage them to take away your pain. But Jesus found something before there was now Trexone. G oh, Gene, I'm talking about Gene found something before there was a drug to replace it. Before all these new designer drugs was out, he went to the altar and found Jesus. Yeah. And I'm going to tell you something, when Jesus gets in your life, when the Holy Ghost steps in your life, he not only steps in figuratively, he steps in physically, and he can reach in your body and turn down what needs to be turned down and turn up what needs to be turned up. And the joy that you get on that altar, y'all, if you ain't been there, you don't even know what I'm talking about. Somebody say, I know what you're talking about, Pastor. I, I need a witness here. Don't leave me out here by myself. I got, I'm telling Gene's testimony, but some of y'all got the testimony of the joy you found on the altar. You went in pain and you left delivered. You went depressed and you left feeling victorious. You went down and something picked you up. And they said, oh, it's just mind game. But whatever the game was, it worked for you and it's still working. Somebody put a praise out there right now. Hallelujah. Oh, the joy that came to me, the song says, when I knew that I was free, when the spirit found me, put his arms all around me. Oh, the joy that came to me. Yeah, church will not only put something on you, it'll put something in you. When it gets in you, it's the most valuable you thing you have in the world. It's worth everything to you, and the world doesn't get it because they haven't tried it. They haven't tried it. They don't know it because they haven't experienced it. In fact, the world can't stand it. 
The world can't stand it. Thank you. Somebody said, I know what you're talking about. Thank you, Sister Johnson. I need a witness here. Oh, the world can't stand it because you traded the world for the thing that only the church can give. Oh, you go to that church every day. Well, you go to your dealer every other day until you run out of supply. Then you go get some more, didn't you? You go to the liquor store every time you run out because you're out. And when you're out, you need some more. Oh, yeah, you go to the grocery store when you're out of food. Why do you go? Because you're out and you need some more. So what's wrong for, with going to church? What's wrong with going to the altar? What's wrong with calling on Jesus till you feel something happen? What's wrong with putting your trust in the Lord and saying, Lord, in thee do I put my trust? And what's wrong with the fact that Jesus is able to put you in the fire and bring you out. Jesus is able to speak healing in your body and speak to your nerves, speak to your life, speak to your bones, speak to your flesh and speak to your spirit. What's wrong with that? You gotta love that more than you love the world. Yeah, that's why when, once you get hooked on church, you miss it. We found out who was hooked because COVID sent some of us into withdrawals and we couldn't stand it. Uh, we found out who was hooked. That's why we stayed on Facebook and, and stayed on the internet looking for another word. Why? Because we need the thing that gave us peace. We need the thing that gave us joy. Once Gene found it, he never let it go. Once Gene found it, he changed his testimony. Once he found it, he said he came off of those drugs without withdrawal. They told him, you must be crazy, you ought to die. His mama sent him to die. But thank you, ain't RD, for sending him to the South because he found life yeah. and life everlasting. Once you find it, never let it go. Say that with me, once you find it. Find it? Never let it go. And here is the world's criticism about you. And that's why Jesus brought it up to you that believe in you, that you trust God for tomorrow and for everlasting life. And, and they say, you just believe in the pie in the sky. You down here suffering and you giving up everything to follow Jesus. You better do what you know to do because you got to survive. You crazy. You got to make it. But Jesus says this. I'm telling you verily, I'm saying to you. He's saying, I'm saying this is the truthfully as I can tell you. There is no man. Thank you, verse 29. No woman, no boy or girl that have left his house. Nobody has left their home. Nobody has left their lifestyle. Nobody has less, left their friends. And not only your friends, your parents, because sometimes parents don't see what you're going through and don't understand the benefit of Christ in your life. Some time you got parents that don't even understand salvation and are upset with you. They, they see a, a you that they didn't raise. They, they see a you that, that has some understanding and they didn't give it to you. They see a you that has a lifestyle and they didn't teach it to you. So they got a problem with you because it looks like you think you know more than they know. And after all, I'm mama, I'm daddy. And I'm not telling you, you got to leave your parents, but if leaving your own home and, and leaving the counsel of mother and the counsel of father in order to have the peace of God, then you better do what you got to do. But Jesus says, I know some of y'all left and your parents never spoke to you again. I, I know some of you left. And, and, and they said, you're crazy. You done got over in that sanctified church and lost your mind. I know some of you left and don't take all that dancing and praising. Hallelujah. In the church house. Thank you. Thank you. My co-workers. It's cruel. Thank you for sharing your husband's family with me and let me see the joy of the cruel family and praising God at funerals and, and praising God in the dance. You knew I would understand. Oh yes. You knew I would get it. There's some people you couldn't show that to. They just, it would just be confirmation. Y'all all crazy. Y'all all done lost your mind. You gave up common sense for church sense. Gave up common sense. Why? Because you know, you know, you. we all flesh. We all human. We all just go in the same way. It don't take all that. I'm just as saved as you are. Believe what you want to believe. I'm not living saved to condemn you. I'm living saved that I might know him in his strength and might know him in his power. If you can make it doing what you do, go on and make it. But let me make it the way I need to make it. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. So somebody had to leave the house. Some had to leave parents, oh yes. Or brethren, brothers and sisters. I mean, if every time you get with them, they want to tell you how crazy you are, you still in the church, they know you quit drinking, but they keep offering your drinks. You know, you quit smoking and, and gave up the drugs and they keep on bringing your paraphernalia and trying to help you get high, trying to get the old you back. You keep saying the old man is dead and they keep trying to do CPR. 
you might have to leave your brothers. You might have to leave those sisters and brothers and, and God forbid, but Jesus is talking. I hate to even get to this one, but Jesus is the one that said it. Oh, oh yeah, let me make sure you know where I'm talking about. St. Luke chapter 18, chapter 18, verse 29. <clears throat> he even says, verily I say to you that there is no man that have left house or parents or brethren or wife. Uh-oh. There's no man that have left his wife. And Jesus speaking directly to the disciples who walked away from careers, walked away from families that rejected Christ and rejected their calling to be a disciple, walked away from wives who said, you've lost your mind. If you're going to have him, you can't have him and me. And then uh, in their spirit, they wrote the song that said, I'd rather have Jesus than silver or gold. I'd rather have Jesus than riches untold. I'd rather have Jesus than any other thing that this world can afford to give. You gotta make up in your mind, I'd rather have Jesus. Somebody say, I'd rather have Jesus. Come on church, I need you to get engaged. I, I need you to jump on this bandwagon with me. I'd rather <laughs> have Jesus. But Jesus says there's nobody that's even left their parents or, or even left their brothers and sisters or even their wife, Job, even their wife, man, even their wife. And to testify, Elder Benson, Elder Benson, he was our assistant pastor growing up, said at the time his wife wasn't saved. He said she was mean towards him. She didn't like the fact that he loved the Lord, loved God, but he was taught the humble way to pray through and to, to fast and to pray. And that he said sometimes he'd be on his knees praying and she would walk by and kick him in his backside. Oh, down here on your knees praying. What kind of man are you praying to an unseen God? Oh, but one day she heard him praying and he said, Lord, I, I'm taught not to leave her. So I need you either to save her or take her. And something fell over her, the, the condemnation, the guilt, the pain, and the repentance came. And she gave her life to the Lord because she knew she had a holy man. And that if this man prayed, something was going to happen. He chose to suffer. And some have had to leave. And not even do they have to leave brothers, wives, sometimes their own children. Sometimes your own grown children will cause you to have to draw a line and say, if it's you or Jesus, i got to let you go. If hanging with you is going to bring me down, I can't hang with you no more. If being involved with your crisis and your conditions is going to be the thing that's going to separate me from the blessing of the Lord, I'd rather have Jesus. So son, don't call me no more until you got something better to say. Daughter, don't come by until you're coming to say, I accept the Christ that's in you. And I love you and the Christ that's in you. Y'all don't hear me today. Yeah. Anyone that has left the house, left your parents, left your brothers or sisters, your wife, your husband, your children for the kingdom's sake. What this young rich ruler wouldn't do. He wouldn't leave silver. He wouldn't leave gold. It was all about his wealth, not even about his family. You don't have that kind of wealth, but your wealth is your family. The thing that's richest to you is that precious child, now 30 years old, 40 years old, and want to criticize you for turning to Jesus. <laughs> He said, I'll tell you what, you got to make up in your mind whom you're going to serve. But he says this to you, there's not one that has left for the kingdom's sake. And I'm saying this to all you great preachers and teachers, evangelists, missionaries, deacons and brothers, you that have labored and helped build churches and, and God was moving on you and you gave your wealth to build a church and gave her your substance and people talked about you. You building that church and ain't nobody there. You building that church, who is gonna help? But God had you building for the future. God had you building for tomorrow because he knew a generation was gonna come, a time was gonna come that people would not give to build the church. People would not sow in the ministry. They would lose the taste for the things of heaven and would not. So you needed a generation that would invest. 
and you gave up everything. You gave tithes, offering pledges, first Sunday drives and shoe drives, shoe rallies, hat rallies. Y'all know what I'm talking about. You got up early, sold chicken dinners and fish fries and, and you worked in the church. It was another job, but it was not for you. It was not for the money. It wasn't even for the preacher, but it was to help build the kingdom and build the ministry and build a building that people could come to to get the same kind of deliverance that you got. And they talked about you, laughed about you, you done lost your mind, giving all your money to the church. You ain't getting nothing for it. But let Jesus testify. He looks you in the eye when you've been criticizing, when you see examples of those that could help, but they're too rich to help. And they'll turn around and walk away. He says, I wanted you to know that there is not one of you that have left everything you've left your house you left your parents you left your brothers and sisters you left your wife your husband you left your children for the kingdom's sake who shall not receive manifold more in this present time see okay i'm shouting right now i, I can't, can't get up right now but i'm shouting right now i don't hear the organ right now but i'm shouting right now because i know i got a blessing coming on the other side i know i got promises coming on the other side i know i got gifts joy love peace the fruit of the spirit will fully manifest in the coming life but he says i promise you that if you do it in this life you will receive manifold more in this present time and in the world to come, life everlasting. Yeah. yeah, in the world to come, you get life everlasting. But look, church, Jesus says, I promise you, the words I'm saying are true. Verily, it means this is absolutely true, that if you forsake things of this life for the kingdom of God's sake, yeah. you, I guarantee you, you will receive manifold more. There's not a one of you who shall not receive much more, many times more in this present time. Somebody say in this present time. So yes, we've been taught to trust God for tomorrow. Trust God because after a while we'll be on the other side of Jordan. I know we've been taught all the old songs and, and those came out of a days when there was no bright future, the days where slavery was an end station for many and they mourn their condition, but they yet believe God for a better day. They believe God for a better time. Soon we will be done with the troubles of this world. Oh yes, and, and we looked at old man River, he just kept on rolling, kept on rolling along. Everything was rolling but us. Oh yeah, but God says to you, look, when you do it for the kingdom's sake, I promise you. Mm -hmm. Somebody say he promised me. He promised. Come on, say it, he promised me. He promised. That he would give you blessings in this present time. And the present time is August, August 11. 2021. Say with me, August 11, 2021. I have a blessing from the Lord. I have a promise from the Lord that I will receive in this present time. And yes, in the world to come, everlasting life. Somebody give God a praise for that. So I know we focus on tomorrow. Everybody, we live and save for a better day tomorrow. Oh no, we like wimpy. We'll gladly uh, give you a. a, a if, uh, I'll pay you tomorrow for a hamburger today. Oh no, but God got a hamburger for you today, Amen. And you don't have to make man a promise to get it. God has a blessing for you. I know I stepped out of somebody's era. I don't even know who wimpy is. God has a blessing for you, and it's available in this present time hallelujah and my cousin my brother gene our cousin spent the rest of his life calling on the name of the lord compelling men and women to come to jesus he was like paul he preached one great message his testimony and it was convincing enough that people who knew him and those that didn't would come to the altar saying what must i do to be saved that's why his own brothers and sisters surely ought to be saved because they saw his life change. Yes, surely they ought to accept Christ because they saw the great turnaround. If anybody knows you more, it's sometimes the one you got to separate from. Right. 
who's in who is it jesus said that uh if you separate from these for the kingdom sake god's going to give you a great blessing if for the kingdom sake some of y'all don't have to leave for the kingdom sake some of y'all they're, ha they're happy with you being saved because they couldn't stand you in the world you were too sloppy of a drug too busy of a busybody, too much of a thief they didn't even trust you they're glad you found jesus <laughs> hallelujah oh but for those of you that had to leave the thing that was a richness a rich richness uh, to you a riches to you the wealth of the world to you was your beloved family like amos says we are the wealth to each other we love each other we love each other but we can't let one amos bring another one down and whatever your name is you can't let another one bring you down you got a hold to his hand god's unchanging hand build your hopes on things eternal and he promises you if you have to give up something your greatest wealth and you do it in this present time for the kingdom's sake he said i got your back you have believed me for the latter day but believe me for the present day I want to talk to those of you that have a distress in this present day. You got problems in this present day. You got issues in this present day, concerns in this present day. You're going through in this present day. There's a promise from the Lord for you. I ask you not just to trust him for tomorrow, because you've already said, well, though he slay me, yet will I serve him. You've already said, well, when I get through with this, I'll just rest and be with Jesus but he can give you peace on earth. He can give you spiritual rest. He can give you a comfort that the world can't take away. But are you willing to do what Gene did? Are you willing to sacrifice everything else for the sake of the kingdom? I say to his boys, which I call sons, give your life to the Lord. You had a perfect example of righteousness. Amen. Yeah, Quincy. That's right. Yeah, Tony. Yeah, Duncan. And, and, and yeah, uh, Tyrus. Thank you, Sister Amos. You know how I am with names. All of y'all. You got a right to serve the Lord. That's right. Why? Because you know what a turnaround could do. And his turn blessed your life, gave you a good home to be reared in. The first car you ever rode in was a Cadillac because he turned his life around and it wasn't stolen either. <laughs> Hallelujah. Had a wonderful wife, Sister Joey, and God bless you. Yes. yes, you all became the example of, of the message today. But this is a promise from the Lord. There's no man that have left house or parents or brother or wife or children for the kingdom of God's sake who shall not receive manifold more. Somebody say more. I want more, 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 Jesus, more, more, more. I want more, 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 Jesus, more, more, more. You can have more in this present time and in the world to come, life everlasting. I believe God has more for you. And I want you to expect more expect a turnaround because look at what you've done in the kingdom look what you did for the kingdom look at your sacrifices for the kingdom and look at how god is able to give you exceeding abundantly more than you can even ask or think according to his riches and glory is he, he's able to bless you I thank God for you and I believe God has spoken today. Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your promise. Somebody needed to know there's more for them. Somebody need to know there is a better way. There is a way out. Somebody need to know you could turn it around. Somebody needed to know their work was not in vain. Somebody need to know that you could bless them. Even in the midst of crisis or a storm, you're able to turn it around. Lord, I pray that their strength will be fortified in them that they'll know you're a God like none other, and you always keep your promise. Bless each and every one. If they're not saved, let salvation be born in them. They don't know you as a savior, Lord. Let them be restored and reacquainted with you if they fall away. In the name of Jesus, we say, Lord, we praise you. We bless you and we magnify you. In Jesus' name, we say thank God and amen and amen.
you can expect more in this life. I ask each of you, dedicate your life to the Lord. Don't let anything be more valuable than your relationship with the Lord. There is not a friend like the lowly Jesus. <laughs> no, not one. No, not one. And he will be a friend for life. Thank you, old landmark. I'm going to let it go. I got to let it go. But that was the teaching for tonight. And I pray you got a blessing. Come on, give God a praise out of that. Thank you, my friend. Something about the name of Jesus. Bishop Vance Allen and Kirk Franklin. Hallelujah. Sweetest name I know. Each of you, if you will, honor the Lord tonight with your substance, with your first fruit. If you're tithing tonight, if you're presenting your gifts to the Lord, if you don't have a church to give to, a church to tithe to, honor me and give to Old Landmark Church of God in Christ. You may give by way of the cash app, dollar sign Old Landmarks, just that easy. You cash app your friends and cash app the church, Old Landmark. You may also give by way of the Givelify app, G-I-V-E-L-I-F-Y dot com. And if you choose to mail, there is a P.O. box that is in the text line. I ask you each to be honor, honoring God with your gift. Everybody give something. Hey, Sister Tara, God bless you. Tara, you came in just in time to give me an offering. <laughs> God bless you. Love you and the family. Everyone that can, give the Lord something. God bless you. Let your gift be known. Let the world know you're giving. Put a note in there, I gave. Let people see that you're a giver, not just a receiver. Hallelujah. Can't hear you, dear. Amen. Esther Mendez, thank you so much. I know someone love the name Jesus. Oh, how I love the name Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Stroud. Thank you, Sister Williams. You're so kind. Thank you, Sister Hilda. Each of you that can, give the Lord something. Oh, yeah. This is how our church has been able to be sustained through this ministry, through your giving, through your faithfulness. We know the virus isn't through with us. You might be through with it. It's not through with you. I encourage everyone to please be vaccinated. Talk to your doctors, to your providers. If you have questions, get an understanding. But don't let all your good be undone by a little virus. Become bigger than the virus, bigger than the needle, bigger than the vaccination. Trust God for this present day. Come on, let's get through this. Let's get over this situation that's killing people and now rising on a greater level like we saw. But we don't want a repeat of 2020. Oh, everybody was hurt. Everybody was in crisis. We were shut in, locked in, shut down. Stores lost, businesses closed, jobs were lost because of behavior. And if we had covered up, taking the vaccination, we wouldn't be in this situation. But we can come out, but we still got to work together. Amen. God bless you. Are you giving? Are you giving? Thank you. I know. I can't hit that note. I can't hit that note. I'm not going to try. Not on the air anyway. God bless you, Sister Parker. Hallelujah. Thank you, Deacon. Ministers, elders, mothers. Thank you, Minister Eubank. God bless you. He's the sweetest name I know. Oh, I would love the name Jesus. We missed the Bishop Rance Allen. Oh, what a blessing he was to the body of Christ. A great man, a great friend. Lost many friends this year, last year. Doug Miller, we miss you. Brother Doug would come by almost every Mother's Day for Old Landmark, and we worshiped together. He called Mother Mayo his mother. But we honor him, his music legacy. 
Bishop Nathaniel Wells, love you. Wells family, you know we love you. Your father, your husband, Mother Wells. Great man of God was a blessing to me in many ways. Bishop Thomas, Bishop Matthew, Matthew Williams, and so many more of my cousins, Maddie, Kate, so many have gone to be with the Lord, but we know God is able. Bishop Lawrence Mann, we were friends before we were bishops. We thank God for these. Well, God bless you. Get that vaccination. Keep on praising God and trust God for this present time. Thank you.